Hello, 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 everyone. Be out, Carter here. Hoping that you are doing well. Working on your puzzle one piece at a time. I know I've been out of pocket a little bit lately. I've been uh, working on some things pertinent to me and my family, my household, as well as taking a break from YouTube and some of the um, foolishness and bakery, if you will. Um, just because I just don't like spending my wheels wasting time with uh, people who are about playing games and trolling. For me, it's about moving my people forward, moving myself forward, holding people accountable, um, making progress in some areas, on all areas, if at all possible. And, um, you know, when you run into people who pretend so much and then you turn around and you know you find out that they're not what they say they are whatever the case may be just you know take a break from that and just uh, focus on some other things put my energy in some other areas but um you guys are always on my mind and my thoughts and my well wishes and i want to start this calendar year off with um just some words a few words. Uh, I think I left uh, the last video that I posted. I've done some, but I have not posted them as of yet. Was about the uh, young lady in Dallas that was shot in her home. And I think I ended it somewhere, um, referencing a series that I've been working on. That series is complete. I'm not sure if I posted it here on YouTube or not, just because, you know, with all the craziness that's going on, I may move it to. I may actually put it on a different platform that I also have um, been working on. But I um, want to kind of give us a, a pep talk, if you will. Um, it's a new year. I mean, to make the most of it. I don't know how many more years we're going to have. We know there are a lot of changes coming down the pipelines, and they're coming quick, mighty quick. In the blink of an eye, things are changing. And let me also say, just excuse my hoarseness, that is um, uh, considered a war wound. And I'll leave it with that for now. More details on that a little later on. But I'm still alive, well, and kicking. Um, but yeah, back to the, the subject at hand. Someone once said, you know, I, I think I said get the, the government out of our business. Um, they have no desire to help. They have no real desire to help. And someone once told me, they're already in our business, it matter. And I said, don't make it easy for them. Um, why would you give your enemy everything about you so that when they choose, so they can turn that innocent into bad? For example, what they call it, the 30, they call it dirty 30. Or, you know, if it's someone 20, they turn 21 and they go get tore up or lit up or whatever they call the term. The um, bottom line, they go get drunk. You wouldn't necessarily tell your enemy that, that you got sloppy drunk to where you threw up. Because the first chance your enemy gets to try to clown you, they're going to make reference to that and try to give the impression that you do that all the time. And you know, it was just, you know, your 21st birthday, you said you're going to get tore up. It might have been your 30th or, you know, I don't know, your wedding night, whatever the case may be. But um, you get the point. Be careful what you share with your enemy and your so-called friend. Because friends will become an enemy real quick. Friends will ghost you for no reason whatsoever and they start talking about you behind your back and you have no clue what's going on. So whatever they know about you, they will turn around and twist it to bad for whatever purpose. And that's part of another series, which I'll, I'll you know, get into a little later on. Bottom line, trust. If anything ever comes up with you in the future, it's going to come back to bite. You remember the man who, um, and, and this is the one thing that was coming to mind, but you know, we see it all the time. Every time um, there's a situation and there's uh, something between the two different races, the black and the white, we are, don't, not we, 
but media, police, all of them make sure they bring up the history of the black person. And they don't bring up the history of the Caucasian person. And the, the example that's coming to mind is the family that was up north somewhere and the baby fell in the gorilla encagement or whatever. And everyone dogged out the mom for not keeping up with the kid. They even went dogging out the dad even went to his background, trying to show his criminal background, which he had a dang one thing to do with the situation. So I say that to say, be careful what you share with whom. Um, because something just so innocent, or even if it was your past, people will bring it up and try to use it to destroy your character and reputation today, to manipulate circumstances, to manipulate an image, about you today to suit their purposes today may not be you you know dad might have been a gangster 30 years ago but today you know for the last 29 years he's been living on the straight and narrow and he get into one situation don't think they're not gonna pull up the fact that he was a gangster 30 years ago so those are the things you're going to be careful about and it's not necessarily about being secretive i had someone shit say to me that uh I was so secretive, I must be hiding something. And you know, I've had people in my life uh, attempt to try to dig into my past because I must be hiding something. I must be doing something inappropriate because I'm secretive. I don't call it secretive. I call it selective as to who I let in my inner circle. I call it selective as to who I share what with, selective as to who I let into my home, selective as to what I share with whom. And that includes my blood relatives. So if I got blood relatives that I don't let into my personal business, my personal life, my finances, my goals, my desires, my wishes, my wants, you a stranger on the street, why should I let you in? Um, because life has taught me firsthand that not only will people try to use innocent things against you, but if they see you trying to make progress in any area they will figure out a way to try to destroy it to try to pr um, block it prevent it from happening just because they are not where you are or just because they're jealous or envious or they might be mad at you who knows for whatever reason so bottom hand bottom line don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing um but in this year let's start being proactive Let's um, stop being so reactive and proactive. We want to march, protest, and still sing Kumbaya. Mm-mm. It's time out for that. I'm not saying you have to go fighting folk and, and taking up arms, although, you know, if, if a fight comes to you, that's up to you whether you walk away or whether you stand there and fight it. Um, if an armed person comes up to you, that's up to you how you handle it. But I say let's be proactive. Street drug runner, listen to me carefully. You are running a business. You hire people, you hire the, the runners for you, you fire them. That's personnel, that's HR. You manage people, that's management skill. You manage your budget and expenses, that's finance. You are running a business. How about use those skills for, for business that helps you and your people? Not necessarily for a business that's hurting your people and that's going to position you to be either dead or in jail before it's over with. Use your skills in a different manner. Um, those of you who are members of gangs, y'all are organized, well organized. You got your sets, you got your codes, you got your uniforms, you got your weapons, you got all that other stuff. You have a basic infrastructure to be um, a security team or a um, I wouldn't say a police department, but yeah, a security department. Maybe some of you can put the robbery against each other down and start policing our neighborhood, start policing us. Using your investigative skills, you know how you can investigate when Pookie got shot and within 24 hours, we know who did it, why they did it, where they did it, where the gun at, how many bullets, we know all of that. Use those investigative skills to police our own. 
and be security for our own, not against us, but for us. Every other group does it. You can't go into, you know, there's a Chinatown in every major city. If you don't look like them, you can't go in their neighborhood without being looked at, questioned, something, something going, you know, you can't just walk freely in their neighborhood. There's a little Italy in every major city. You can't go in little Italy without being questioned, stopped, asked something. Shit, you can't go in a, in a fluent neighborhood if you don't live there without being questioned. So let's start policing our own neighborhoods and let's start working with each other instead of against each other. Because the bottom line is we all need each other to survive. Everybody is not leaving the U.S. Everybody is not going to Africa or South America or some other country. But we're going to be here. So we have to put in infrastructure here. Gangs, you have the security and policing infrastructure already in place. Use it to our advantage. To the uh, welfare slash foster care queen. And that's not to say everybody, and that's why I said the welfare queens. Not everybody on welfare is the queen, and I'm speaking primarily to the melanated community. Um, instead of sitting there just collecting a check for free while you babysitting somebody's kids or your kids or eating bonbons and watching soap operas or whatever they do, turn that into a legitimate daycare. Turn it into a business. And get off of their welfare rolls because before it's over with, Trump and the Republic is going to kick you off anyway and you won't have a backup plan. So use the skills that you're gaining now to open your own business. Begin taking care of our own kids. Or start a homeschool. If you are sitting at home taking care of your kids, collecting a check, start a homeschool. Invite two or three other children in. If their parents are working and, um, you know, you, you, you won't get top pay, obviously, but you'll get something. You'll probably get something commensurate to what you're getting from your welfare check. Um. And then hire staff that looks like us so that your kids can, and those children can emulate someone that looks like us. They can see people that look like us taking care of them. And they will learn, they will grow up to realize that people like us care about each other. They won't always go to somebody else or somebody that doesn't look like them to assume that's where their care is going to come from. And for those who are milking the system, milking the justice system for child support, again, turn your skills into a business. If you done manipulated that child support system and you know it in and out, show people how to handle support and visitation without the justice system. You can open a, a for-profit business, even if you charge 100 bucks, 200 bucks, or, or a sliding scale, whatever it is, get mama and daddy together and okay i'm going to help you all figure out um a child support plan a visitation plan and so mama and daddy you go to this person you get your plan in place and then you file it if necessary or you don't but either way you get your own plan you work it and you keep them out your business keep washington whatever state you in whatever city whatever municipality Keep them out your business. They weren't there when you was getting that baby, were they? No, they weren't there when you were having that baby. It wasn't there when you broke up. So get them out your business now. Handle it. And if you can't handle it, that's why we have those who are who know that child support system in and out. Step in, create a for-profit business, or you can have a nonprofit. And you can get donations to people that you help. They can just donate towards your time. Or you can have a combination of both. But get the government out of business. Whatever your skill set is, use your skill set to get a business license. And we have to start supporting our own. Word of mouth. Word of mouth. We don't have to publish stuff on the internet. You don't have to publish it on YouTube and anywhere else. We don't always have YouTube. We don't always have the internet. But what did we do? When... um. Pookie needed to get gone because Pookie shot Ray Ray and Pookie got to get gone. We didn't get on the telephone broadcasting what was going on. We didn't go take out ads in the newspaper and post them. 
we went to the underground method of communication. We talked in codes and we got Pookie some clothes. We got Pookie out of town until, you know, situation could be handled how it need to be handled. Go back to some of them underground methods if you need to. You don't have to have advertisement. Um, and here's another thing. You can create your own child support payment system, maybe even a child support bank, a separate financial institution, credit, you know, whatever you want to call it, that receive funds for child support from mom and daddy, whoever's, you know, making the payments, and you pay it out. You limit the amount of administrative fees. And here's the thing. If someone has to be hired to work that particular system, make sure that someone looks like us so that we're benefiting from it. And make sure the board of directors are people that look like us, that have our experiences, so that the instructions, the directives, the, the rules, the regulations, the um, operations manuals are all devised by us with our experiences in mind, not someone who ain't never experienced it, who don't know crap. And uh, if she mad because he don't want her no more, she want to use the baby against him, mama, grandmama, auntie, whoever it is, kick her behind, make her sit her behind down and do what's right for that baby. If he's mad because she don't want him no more or she did him wrong or whatever, and he using the kids, same thing. Kick his butt, set him straight. Our uh, gangs, our new po our local police, our own personal police force, pay him a visit. You ain't got to rough him up, but let him know by show of force, either do right, man up, do right, or we gonna handle you. Women, same thing. Go to her, show of force. Woman up, do right, or we gonna handle you. And then guide them give them the guidance, the tools, whatever necessary to do that. Those who know if you're a welder, if you're a carpenter, whatever it is, turn it into a business. Even if you get, and then maybe you have to start out a part-time business and you continue working your job. And we got to stop being the crab in the barrel and start saying, okay, well, Johnny down the street, he knows welding. I need a particular pipe welded together for whatever reason. Well, let me go get Johnny. And here's the thing. If welders normally get paid $100 an hour, if Johnny's rates are 75 don't try to jimmy Johnny down to $10 an hour. If he wants to volunteer his services, that's one thing. But don't expect him to do it for damn near free. Because if you go get Billy Bob, Billy Bob going to charge you $100 an hour. Billy Bob ain't giving you no cut. So if Johnny charging you 75, pay the damn 75 and be happy. Or if Johnny works a $50 rate an hour for you, you pay him that and be happy. Don't expect him to do it for you for free because it's a business for him too. And he's trying to grow. And by the same token, when he does uh, do your work for you, don't forget to tell everybody you know anytime something comes up mention him grab a couple business cards if necessary and mention him hey he did some great work he's small time he's building etc so it may take one minute to get to you but he's worth the wait he'll get you done he cleans up behind himself excellent work etc etc he's reasonable he'll work with you whatever the case may be to get him in the door and then the same thing Johnny, you do the same thing for that person's skill if they do hair. Well, um, she did my daughter's hair, and my daughter loves I take her every Saturday to get her hair done. So here, you know, here's her name and number. Give her a call. She can get your daughter's hair done, especially for you parents that don't know nothing about doing hair. Find somebody to do your baby's hair, and you don't necessarily always have to be weed pulling it hair out the follicles and all that other good stuff. The other thing is you can use your skills as a nonprofit. Start a nonprofit and start teaching the youth your skill because they're not getting shop anymore. When I came along, we had shop. We had wood shop and we had metal shop and I took both. 
that they tried to reserve them primarily for the boys and put us girls in home ec and stuff like that. But I was a little tomboy and I wanted shop. So I did wood shop and I did metal shop. I don't know enough to work in the field, so don't ask me. But I know some basics so I could do some stuff around the house if necessary. But if you have that skill set, teach it to the youngsters because they're not getting it in school now. Um, and again, with the hair, you do hair, combine with somebody else or combine with someone who does nails, eyebrows, makeup, tats, whatever. Open a shop or two or three. And in some cases, you could put a shed in your backyard at a, a restroom, you put up a wall at a restroom, run some water and electric, boom. It's cheaper than renting a space somewhere. Put those other folk out of business. Too many of us have the skills, but we're not using them the right way. Keep the money in our community. If we never said it before, it is time, it is beyond time, it is critical critical, we're at critical stage here to keep this money in our community. Doctors, if you're in the medical field in any way, whether you're a doctor, nurse, nurse practitioner, um, midwife, um, whatever your skill is in the medical community, bring your skills back to the community. And here, the gangs, our security, our new security team, the gangs have just formed, protect them. Make sure the offices are protected. Make sure folk know, don't go in there robbing that doctor. That's Dr. Jamerson. We need him to take care of the people in the neighborhood. And actually, you should be doing it about all of them, but definitely the, the professionals who are bringing their skill set back to the community. Put the word out that, you know, these people, they're off limits. The whole area is, but definitely those professionals, they're off limits. These businesses that are opening up, they're off limits. You want to rob somewhere, you get out of our area. Get out of our neighborhood and go rob somewhere else. And actually, they shouldn't be robbing at all, but if they must rob somewhere else, don't rob our area. Lawyers, stop selling out your own fucking people just to be able to practice law. Because truth be told, when you sell out your people, you're going to be dealt your nigga card at some point. You're going to be handed your card back. So stop selling out your people to practice law. How about use your skills to really help your people? Fight for them tooth and nail. By the same token, Black community, if you got a lawyer willing to stand up and fight for you tooth and nail and risk losing their license for you, you better be prepared to make sure their kids got food, that um, you know their lights are paid, whatever the case may be. If you gotta throw rent parties, if y'all have to take up collections, if you have to help, they keep just giving them as much work as you can. And even if they wind up being um, paralegals, or if they wind up just uh, opening a nonprofit and giving you the information and, and guiding you how to handle stuff pro se because their license has been revoked because you know white supremacy got mad. That's all well and good. You still have someone that has the skill set to teach you how to do it and protect them. But lawyers, stop selling out your own. It's time out for that. I've personally seen too many lawyers sell out their own so they can keep their license, so they can keep a car, so they can keep a particular house and they do nothing. They sit back and say and do nothing. And they see blatant laws being violated against their clients. I see lawyers railroading their clients into shit. Criminal, civil. Stand up, lawyers. Community, stand with them. Like I said, raise money for lawyers with integrity if necessary. You got somebody in your community, a, a melanated person, need a lawyer with integrity to fight for them and they don't have the money, damn it, you throw whatever parties you got to throw. Sell as many hot dogs as you got to sell. Uh, forego a couple of those Popeye's chicken sandwiches. So that you can put money toward that person to get a lawyer with integrity um, to fight whatever the situation is they're fighting. Be in the courtrooms with them. Support your own. 
drive them to court if necessary. Donate a suit if they need a suit. Show your support. If it means blasting something on social media for them, you blast and you keep blasting. We blast when our dog does something crazy. We blast when our cat does something funny. We blast when our two-year-old child learns the latest dance. We blast when Ray Ray and, and, and Johnny got into a fight. We blast when Shaniqua pulled out um, Bebe's weave. Why we can't blast that uh, um, Sue over here um, needs $50 or $500 for a lawyer. Why we can't blast that? And it's not because she's fighting against white supremacy. She might be fighting against just the next door neighbor or the, you know, just something that's not uh, widely publicized. But she needs a legal representation. Blasting on social media, help her get the help. I'm gonna pause this. Insurance agents or brokers or whatever y'all are. Why not have you why not start our own insurance company? You got uh, rental insurance, you got auto insurance, you got property and casualty. You've got life insurance, you've got health, all the different areas. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy. And you don't have to start doing all of them. And we don't have to have just one. How about if you're in um, one person's in property and casualty, another person's in life, another one's in health, whatever. You guys, we can have multiple different insurance companies. And then you can work together. You can even combine and work together. And so that we are doing what we're keeping the money within our community. And we don't have all these GoFundMe's every time somebody dies. And we can have life insurance and then have it reasonable. You have some term policies, some whole policies, the, what they call it, what, was it Gerber or Globe or something? When the babies are born, you can have them policies. You can have policies for everybody. The over 50, the, the high risk, the whatever you want to categories you want to put it because insurance is a ripoff as it is in a lot of ways the government mandates that we have it so open our own and i don't mean a franchise of one of those that are already in place i mean our own start small and i promise you i'll be one of the first ones to sign up it is if it's owned by one of us, top to bottom, all the way through, owned by us, I'd be one of the first ones to switch my insurance. Because truth be told, I pay pretty good money for the policy that I have, and it is owned by them, and they still do what they want to do. They still don't follow the law. They still don't pay what they're supposed to pay. So, abusers. Community, handle their asses. Stop supporting them. Stop talking to. Stop talking and do. It's beyond time for proof. Stop telling Ray Ray. Um, you know, leave them young girls alone. I remember seeing a video once where um some guys they basically beat up another guy. The guy had brought in a teen, a young girl underage, and that was the second time he'd done it. I think the first time they warned him, and then he tried it again. They said, look, we can't have this. So you're going to have to take this, this butt whooping. And they commenced the whooping his behind and posted the video and said, don't bring back another child up in here no more. You're a grown man now. You deal with grown women or we're going to deal with you. That's what we need to start doing. Mama, stop turning your cheek when he's bringing that girl that's too young. Or stop turning your cheek when you see him hitting on that woman and you know he ain't supposed to. Or, or vice versa. If she's the one doing the abuse, and stop turning her cheek. You get the proof. And I'm not saying kill them. I'm not saying go shoot them and all that. But you handle them. You handle them like you need to handle them. Whatever is appropriate to stop the situation, you do what you got to do. And don't tell her, just move on or tell him to go on about your business. Okay, no, because they've got trauma now that they've got to deal with. And part of dealing with that trauma is A, moving them out of the situation, but B, vindicating them. If the person has never dealt with 
they always going to have some piece of that trauma in them. So that person has to be dealt with. And then remind them, you'll be back if they try any more mess. He took her money, he played her, whatever it is, take the money and give it back to her. He took her money because he's too weak to take a man's money. You know, guys that get with these welfare girls and they sitting around living for free, whatever, you want to take her money instead of going to rob her, that, you know, Joe next door because you're too weak to rob a man, but you want to play a woman. Show him what, what, it, what it feels like to, to have money taken from him. Take it back. And when 10 men come to him to collect, he going to pay it back one way or the other. And y'all make sure he do. Molesters. Handle them. Don't support them. Don't have nothing to do with them. Like I said, that video where the guys, that the one guy was bringing in the young girls. And they, the first time they gave him a pass and, you know, talked to him. The second time they commenced to whooping him. That's what we need to do. Stop turning the other cheek because you know you, you everyone got that uncle in the family who like to mess with the kids. Put something on him. We know how to fix grits. We, everybody house got a black cast iron frying pan. If you don't go get you one, you're supposed to have one. Some of your children, somebody done played baseball somewhere or football, not football, or softball or hockey. You know what to do with that stuff. Handle him. Don't allow him to be messing with the children because what does that do? That creates another generation filled with trauma. So that's another generation that we're behind getting back to where we need to be. You social media professionals, use your platforms and create a few. Blast the information so that we can support each other. If the sister's getting railroaded um, for whatever reason, blast it until she's got enough army standing with her, supporting her in every which way that she needs, and don't stop. Brothers getting railroaded by some something, some wrong judicial system or, or some wrong situation, whatever it is, blast it until he's got people helping and standing with him. You know, making sure they got people helping them organize the papers, finding evidence finding the right lawyers, finding the witnesses, tracking down whatever they got to track down to get their stuff cleared and taken care of to, to a proper level, to a proper satisfactory level. That's what your social media platform is for. Not for you to be um, the king of YouTube or the queen of YouTube or Anchor or a Facebook or um, Snapchat, whatever they are. Mm -mm. Use your reach that you have to get the message out about things that are going on. And don't do it just once. Once is not enough. Once is not enough. The squeaky wheel gets the, the, the oil, right? So be that squeaky wheel and keep squeaking and squeaking until animal oil are poor. IT people, use your skills for us. Run trace routes to help find where the emails are coming from if somebody is being, you know, uh, harassed by email. And then call in our local police, our own personal police to go handle it. Tap every vulnerability that's out there to our advantage. Um, if you've got people stealing identities and stuff, Use IT people, use your skills to help us track that information because the police don't give a damn about us. They're going to go find when somebody steals money from a bank, they're going to find them. When somebody breaks into government uh, uh, computer systems, they're going to find them. When they break into the computer systems of major companies, Microsoft or Comcast or whomever, they're going to find them. But when they break into our computer systems and steal $100 from us, they don't give a damn about that. They're not going to find them. And the bank going to do what, just give you your $100 back, make you go through a bunch of changes, give your money back, and tell you change your password. Ain't nobody looking for them, though. So IT people, you use your skills and you help find them. 
and then you hold the police accountable for putting those people in jail. Because nine times out of 10, it ain't us that's doing it. Most of us didn't go to school to be IT people to learn to that degree. It's some of us, but not a whole lot of us. And most of us that are in the IT field tend to have a little bit more integrity. It's a few fools, but I shouldn't say fools. It's a few that don't have that same level of integrity, but most of us have that level of integrity because most of us never had those job opportunities. So we value them. And we're trying to keep our jobs and stay on the straight and narrow. But use your skills to help us because trust and believe they're using their skills against us. And here's the other thing. If you find that somebody is using their skills against us, let's say me, for example, if I've got my next door neighbor's a hacker and um, he's black and I'm, we're both black. Hey, do what you need to to help me track it down to my next door neighbor and have our little local police go to my neighbor and handle it. And then if my neighbor doesn't want to step up to the plate, right, use your skills to give him a dose of his own medicine. Or then we could turn them over to white supremacy and let them deal with it. But, you know, we need to start helping each other. Hackers, you hack. I'm not going to tell you to do anything illegal, but you use your skills to get the evidence we need to help our people, period. That's what they do. Again, she needs a copy of some particular document and people effing her around to get to it. Help her get the document. So she can move on to her next step. He needs a copy of some particular paper to help prove that he wasn't in this, the, the vicinity of this particular crime and you know he wasn't there. You get that information. You use your skill set to get that information. Because trust and believe a prosecution probably already has a copy of it. But how many cases have we seen where evidence is withheld from the courts? just so the lawyer's outcome can occur, the prosecution's outcome, or sometimes the defense outcome, because sometimes the, the, the two lawyers are working together. So you use your skill set to get the evidence that's needed for us. And I mentioned this before, but what happened to the underground? We stay underground to run our drugs and to do our cooking. If we why not go underground to shop for better, to set up shop for, for us, hibernate and work a plan. So when you come out, you're not starting from scratch. And that's all the way around. Remember I said, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. You get your select few people. Do what you need to do. Don't get on YouTube. Hey, I'm finna start a bank. Uh, get on uh, Snapchat. Hey, y'all, I'm going to start me an insurance company. You ain't done nothing. They're going to shut you down before you can even get to the uh, the FCC, excuse me, the, the uh, Federal Trade Commission to get the information on what you need to do. Do your stuff behind the scenes. Stay underground as you need to stay underground. Hibernate. Do what you got to do so when you come out, you are ready past the starting point. You done made some kind of progress. Churches, y'all already bought most of y'all. And you're a whole other subject. But for the ones that really believe that you're doing right and you're trying to do right by your people, be reasonable with the intake and be fiscally accountable. How about change your mission from winning souls to saving souls on the ground? Don't try to win souls. How about save the souls that are on the ground, here in the natural, here on the ground, here during life. Help people get saved from whatever it is they're dealing with here, right here on the ground, in the physical, where we could touch, see, and hear, and feel it. Because that whole, um, we're going to save you so that you'll be better in the by and by after you die. I'm sorry, but every time I hear that, I think about how the slaves were promised or that they were going to get better in the by and by. And that kept them complicit with or okay with being mistreated during slavery. And really. But again, that's a whole nother subject. 
put your skills to work, church. And if you got any real intent, give up those 501 to threes. If it means, but yeah, give up that 501c3 if you have to. When you have to, um, when you think about the limitations of the 501c3, when you realize that you have bought and sold yourself and your people to a governmental body just to maintain that 501c3, is the money really worth it? And then when you do your self-evaluation, if you say the money is worth it, then you need to shut your church down because that just says you're in it for the money. That says you're not in it to win the souls. You're not in it to save the people. You're not in it to help the people. You're in it to make the money if you're willing to sacrifice them later on. Um, and while you're at it, churches mandate that your members be there to use their skills to help someone else. Don't mandate them to come for a fundraiser or to hear you guest preach somewhere or to attend one of your conferences. Mandate that they use their skills to help someone else. So membership in this church requires you put in five hours of volunteer time to someone else in the church. That might mean five hours of teaching some girls how to bake cookies. That might mean five hours of teaching people how to start a garden. That might mean five hours of teaching young boys how to get them a lawnmower and make them some money. That might mean five hours of, of you know, anything of, of, you know, water purification, whatever the skill set is. But how about make that your mandate for your members? Instead of mandating they come hear you speak or hear some guest preach or come to a conference, mandate they donate their time to teach someone else something. Not necessarily donate their time to babysit while the parents are in there listening to a conference. Donate their time teaching others something. Churches, here's another thing. Why not lose, use your land to grow food, to give away or to even sell it at a reasonable price or low cost? Stop going to the food bank to feed the people. The food bank is, set, is giving you old food, stale food, or food that's, that's not of good quality, that's genetically modified. How about use all those pretty lawns you got churches to grow the food? And here, the members that you're going to mandate to volunteer their time, get you a couple of them, they're mandated to come help run the garden. And they're mandated to teach some others to help run the garden. So you got people to help keep that garden running, to weed it and, and feed it and grow it and fertilize and all that other good stuff. And then get that food away. Or you can even sell it. Start a co-op. And, you know, you can sell it at whatever price you want because it is a co-op. And your options to sell are a little different than selling in a regular store. The licensing is different. Membership. Even if it's the poor people in your neighborhood, you establish what the membership for the co-op is. The membership might be $5. You can set that. And so they can come in and buy groceries from you. $10 at, the, at, at HEB, $4 from you. Do what you're supposed to do, church. But that food from the, uh, the food banks, it's been frozen for who knows how long. It ain't no good. It's about to expire. If it ain't already expired, it's been frozen. It's been thawed out for distribution and sometimes refroze or rethawed out. How many of those cans are dented, botulism sitting inside the can waiting to hurt to, to make people sick? How many pounds of produce? I have personally been on done the feed the uh, the um the homeless or feed the hungry programs and with several different groups. And you open those boxes and they already molded. They come to you molded. Not all of it, but quite often. They come into you in a closed, sealed box that's still frozen. You open it, you see mold or ruin all over it. Pilots. You can fly a plane. 
uh, why not private charter service? Or why not open your own pilot school, become an instructor and open your own pilot school? We need more pilots. Thus, we can eventually open our own small airline. Even if we're just traveling from one city to the next, from, uh, you know, San Francisco to LA, a 200 mile trek or 100 mile trek, whatever it is. Helicopter, small engine, whatever they are. But use your skills. And if you haven't thought about having a pilot's license, go ahead and do it because we need them. We need to have people in every aspect of life. And then we need to support those in every aspect of life. Now, sadly, I have blood relatives who I've heard say, no, they would not drive five extra miles to support a black business. And it hurt me. Ooh, it hurt so. It hurt to hear that. But that's the reality of it. Yes, we do have some. However, that doesn't mean we don't try just because some of us won't support us. Let them continue to support those other races. When it's all said and done and somebody need help, we're going to remember who supported us, who drove the extra 10 miles to support us, and who didn't. Because at some point, they're going to need some help. And then put them, before, put them on the red carpet. Why should we help you when you refuse to support any of the businesses? Ask them. You know, make them explain why. Gas station owners. We don't have enough gas station owners. Every corner you look, it's a gas station, and 99% of them are owned by a certain uh, group, and it's not us. Why we don't own gas stations? Why are we not in the oil and um oil and gas and oil? My mind went blank for a minute. The gas and oil industry. On a larger scale, I know those are long hours, but we can hire people again. That gives us an opportunity to hire more of our own to work. You next time you see a corner that needs a gas station, open the gas station, do what you can. And here's the thing no, you're not going to find the funding. That's why we need our own financial institutions. But until then, we have to be willing to fund each other to so go out to uh what is it the crowdfunding sources and post your stuff and social media people blast it blast it blast it hey we've got johnny here that's trying to open a gas station he needs two million dollars or one million or fifty thousand whatever it is and everybody if you if you can't do nothing but give 3.99 how much you gonna pay for a chicken sandwich you give that and if enough of us gave that, within a week's time, Johnny would have the money he need to open his gas station. And then what? Within six months' time, Johnny got enough money to do what? Turn around and see somebody else to open a gas station. It's got to start somewhere, people. I mentioned the churches with the gardens. What about um, other just regular gardeners? Grow your food and resell it. Again, do a co-op. That way you can restrict who you're selling it to. You determine the rules yourself. Everybody else doing it. Lend your skills to other gardeners who may not know how to start a co-op. Help them to start a co-op and sell the product. Um, or you could even, again, let your neighbors get for free or... or uh, homeless people or whatever, whomever, whatever group you target to get for free, those that are down and out. What, the, what about the mom and pop stores? And they're in various industries. Support them. Don't let all these big box stores keep shutting them down. Yeah, so fine. I may go to Wally World. Excuse me. Um, because they, you know, it, they may have all of the products that I need. But mom and pop have half of them. So how about go to mom and pop for the half that they have? And then say, mom and pop, if you order this particular sausage, I will buy it from you if you keep it in stock. 
I personally have two convenience stores right now that I know of that I have personally said, if you keep this particular product in here, I will buy it from you. And those stores, make sure they keep those products in stock. So, and it's not that they're doing it just for me, because I'm sure it's being sold to other people as well. That's why I had to tell them to get more. Um, but the price was, I went into one, I saw something and I hadn't had any of it in a while. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll try this. And grabbed it and I said, oh, okay. And I um, went back again to get some a couple of weeks later and they were out. And they were like, well, you know, we're gone. We don't sell it. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, if you keep it in stock, I'll buy it. I'm not going to buy it every day or every week, but, you know, I'll buy it to where it doesn't expire or go bad or whatever the case may be. And so whenever I go in for that particular product at that convenience store, they have it in stock. And I remember one time the man held one. They were, sell, I guess, about selling them all. And I went in and I looked on the shelf and I said, oh, you're out of stock. You're waiting on it. He said, no, I put one to the side just for you because I knew you'd be coming. But that's, and that's a small convenience store now. They're not a big one. They don't have a whole lot of merchandise on their shelves and stuff. They're kind of struggling or whatever the case may be. But we have to support our own. We can't get there. We can't get until change, into change, until we change our mindset, until we stop trying to block each other, stop trying to outdo each other, stop trying to tear each other down, stop trying to be the king or the queen of the hill. How, how many of y'all realize that we need more than one beauty shop? We need more than one bank. We need more than one lawn company. One lawn company can't service all of us. One lawn company can't do an entire subdivision. So we need maybe two or three per subdivision, depending on the size of the subdivision. Landlords own the multi-unit apartments. We know that's a trap. Rental, renting versus owning, but some people have to rent and some people choose to rent. So, why not purchase some multi family properties? Two or three of you go in together, grab a couple multi families, start low if you have to. And I love the idea of us getting the multi families and getting the Section 8 or whatever the, all the housing programs and getting our people in them and provide them some place decent to stay or hold them to a certain standard to maintain it as well. Because truth be told, if they are out of certain environments or if the environment that they're in is not conducive to a certain behavior, they're not going to do it for long. Either they're going to switch or migrate over to a different standard of living or they're going to get on up out of there whether they choose to go or whether you get them out. And I guess, you know, after a while and I'm moving too many times, they're going to realize, hold on, wait a minute, let me step up my game because I see the brothers and sisters here, they got this four family duplex and they put it on section eight and they've got it, maybe not decorated to the tip, to the uh, hill, but, you know, decorated nicely and decent or whatever. And they're maintaining it so that me and my kids could have some place decent to be until, you know, our circumstances change. So I'm going to maintain their stuff and I'm going to do right. And then when the time comes for me to move, I'm going to move and somebody else is going to come in. Or you go ahead and get you a full-fledged 10 family unit. And, you know, you may put two or three on Section 8 and the rest of them regular working folk. And, then they, and they don't all have to be black. I mean, there, there is, you know, the, you, you do business. I'm not saying cut yourself short, but I'm saying give ourselves, our people, some opportunities as well. And we have to be the owners. We have to start buying ourselves. I'm more than happy. Anybody here that wants to go in on a multifamily unit, I'm ready to go. I've been looking at some myself personally. But again, the competition, a community needs all these services times two or three. Not one gas station is enough. That's why we have Shell, Chevron, Exxon, Mobil, Gulf, 
Circle K, Valero, uh, BP, Marathon. I can't call the names Flying J Pilot. Uh, you name We got all the different ones. So just having one Chevron is not enough. We got a Chevron over here. Somebody opened a shell down the road. Then somebody else opened the Exxon. Another one get the mobile. Somebody else grabbed the Valero. Before you know it, this whole side of town is locked up with us and we own every single one of them. So you have people driving through and if they, if they are diehard Shell fans, they're going to come support. they support in one of ours. If you're a diehard Exxon fan, you come into our Exxon or mobile or whatever it is. But remember, don't sit each other sit down on each other and squash each other out. Because you want to be territorial, you want to be the king or queen. That's white supremacy thinking. That's divide and conquer. It's enough need to go around. Obviously, you don't want to flood the area with our skills. You don't need 20 beauticians within a five block radius. Spread out. Get you, you know, it makes sure you get north, south, east, west of town, whatever town you're in, and right smack in the middle. And then you fill in from there. You go, um, and, and if you say north, south, east, west, and smack in the middle, form a cross. That forms a big old cross. And then you put somebody between the middle and the east, and then somebody between the middle and the west. And then somebody between the north and the south. I mean, the, the north and the middle, and then the south and the middle. And then go with those diagonals and keep spreading out. Be strategic about it. Just because Ray Ray opened um, a barbershop right here and you don't like Ray Ray, you're going to go right down the street and open another barbershop? Come on, dude. At least give him five or six blocks. So let him have the customers in that area and you go five or six blocks and take the next batch of customers. But I tell y'all, it hurt my heart to hear a sister, black female, who's supposedly all about black consciousness and who I remember buying her daughter a doll one time. And I bought the doll that looked like her. And I hadn't discussed it with her, but that's what I bought because that's what I buy. And she said, oh, good, I'm glad you did that. We hadn't discussed it, but that's I, I'm, I'm glad you did that because, you know, she needs to have dolls that look like her. And that was when the, the girl was younger. And as she gets older, you know, you can kind of spread out. But to start out, you need to have people that look like you, I think. And then you branch into the others. But this same person says she won't drive a few extra miles to support a black business. A black business. Beauty, a beauty supply store is what I, the suggestion that I, we were talking about. But um, as I said to her, that same China man, he will drive an hour each week and bypass a whole bunch of stores along the way to get to Chinatown to buy from his own. Or he will wait. If he has a need, he will wait and do without and go on one day to buy it all Saturday, buy everything he needs from Chinatown so we only make him one trip. Or he'll do without. But you don't see them coming to our neighborhoods buying nothing. They in our neighborhoods with the businesses. So just like they bypass us, and they in our neighborhoods with their business, they can't even buy their damn gas from our neighborhood. Even though they ain't coming to us, they won't even buy the gas. They, they buy the gas from their people in their neighborhoods. They move, they, when they go to sleep at night, more often than not, they're going to sleep in their neighborhoods. We better start using our heads. We got to start using our heads. And that whole um, bougie, I got mine, you get yours, that's bull. Everybody needs help. It's not a matter of I got mine, you get yours. Because trust me, told every black person who is at some level of success, you had help. You didn't get there on your own. You had help from somebody whether it was in kindergarten, whether it was at the high school level, whether it was in undergrad, 
whether you didn't go to college, you just got caught a break and somebody offered to train you. They saw something in you and they offered to train you. What, whatever, wherever it was along the way, you caught a break. Somebody helped you. So get out of that whole mindset of I got mine, you get yours. If your brother works on cars, don't pay nobody else to touch your car. Yeah, your brother might be at a different um, income level than you are. He might be hood or ghetto and you bougie. But if he works on cars, you ain't got no business paying no day on nobody else to touch your car. You're supposed to be going to, and it, this is your blood brother too. You ain't got no business paying nobody else to touch your car. But now, if he don't know what he's doing, that's a different story. But if he knows what he's doing, you go to him first. And if he say to you, hey, sis, or hey, bro, I can't get to you within the time frame you need. But my boy John over there, he can take care of you. Then you go to John. You take his, your brother's referral as to who else to go to. Try to stay within us first. Because hopefully then John is, uh, uh, is making referrals back to your brother so they what keeping the money amongst us. If I braid hair and you my sister or you my blood relative or my close friend, you ain't got no business paying nobody else to braid hair before you come to me and give me first crack at the job. And if you would prefer to go pay someone else to braid your hair, that tells me where you are. That tells me you claim to be my sister or you claim to support me, but you really don't because you would pay someone else and deprive me of the business. Newsflash, y'all. There are so many programs meant to keep people enslaved to the system. Ben Carson, the HUD person, HUD secretary, whatever, just recently stated publicly that they were using Section 8 program to keep people impoverished, to keep people from, from being able to, to advance and move on, manipulating the numbers hiking up their rents, things like that, just to steal their wealth so that people cannot move on in progress. We know the welfare system been doing it. We know anybody that's in any one of those programs, if they try anything, whatever it is they may try, the government gonna come around a back door some other way and snatch it back. So for example, if I'm on Section 8 and I managed to save up $500, Section 8 going to figure out a way to hike up my rent until I've spent that $500 in higher rent, then they're going to put my rent back down to normal. Or if I'm allowed to work, because on all those programs, you're allowed to you know, try to do something, whatever, and there are different limitations or whatever, so you have to check and see what they are. But if I get food stamps and I'm allowed to work and, and have an extra income of an extra $50 a month, <laughs> That's my limit. So if it's babysitting, if it's a yard sale, if it's, you know, whatever, however, I got some little odds somewhere, whatever, you know, working election booth, who knows. Um, trust and believe. The food stamp people, they allow me that $50, but the Medicaid people going to come around and say, oh, well, you had that $50, and now we're going to use count as income, and we're going to cut you off for the next three months because you were over income $50. This is what they do. So people in those programs, not all of them are welfare queens because they choose to be there. They're there because they're stuck there. Some of them want to get out. They have no clue how to get out. All they need is a push. All they need is someone to say, hey, look, I got a plan. I need a willing body. Are you a willing body? Let's do the thing. Some of them have a plan. They have no money. They have no no. Uh, yeah, no money, no resources, no capital to get there. If you've got the capital, say, hey, look, look, the girl, you got a plan. Is there something you, you know, you do want to do this? All right, well, I got 5000 I know four other people got 5000 So that's $25,000 here. We're going to help you work your plan. And, of course, you do the paperwork where you have appropriate um, legal rights or, or, you know, ownership or, However, y'all do the, the paperwork appropriately. You, know, you don't want to just give up the money. Um, and, you know, be a silent partner or a partial partner or inactive, whatever you want to call it. But uh, give her the opportunity to work herself out of there where she can actually make progress 
instead of she working, trying to scramble to get $50 babysitting here. And she's spinning wheels because they're going to turn around and take it from her in another way. And, here, and here's the punishment in it. If she makes $50 one time, the Medicaid ain't going to come and take it from her one time. They're going to come and cut her off for three or six months. So she loses an additional two to five months of Medicaid because she babysat and made $50 one month. That's what they do. So she's punished for trying. And that was one of the things that was discussed way back when, when they had the welfare reform. I want to say, was it under Clinton, Reagan? Um, it's been something, I want to say Clinton it was under his first term. You have to give people options. You have to give them the resources that they need to do better. And a lot of women got off of welfare, not because they were kicked off. They got off because there were resources available to them to get off and actually stay off. So newsflash to the bougie people that have the mindset, I got mine, they need to get theirs, and I'll be glad when they get, get themselves together, but you ain't doing nothing to help them. They need help. That's enough of my rant for now. I'm gonna come back with more a little later on, but my um my daughter's single and we have somewhere to go. But yeah, I do have some more things to recommend in regards to us um being proactive and making the most of this year. Cause stuff is changing and it's changing fast. And we're gonna we're way behind the eight ball as it is. With that being the case, you guys, peace. And continue to work your puzzle one piece at a time.